Hey everyone, and welcome back to Metroid Fusion, where in the previous episode we finally figured out who is our main villain in this game, and it is a walking saxophone. That's right. But today we are starting uh, Sector 2, so computer, whisper something beautiful in my ears, please. Bump data ready, unlock data room, hatch, and download. Okay, so we have a bumps to get, but first, yeah, we have to locate that um, security room. So, yeah, in some cases, uh, computer will tell you what to do, but it will not tell you the means how to get something or get to somewhere, you know? So, yeah, and I actually like that, considering how... Uh, linear this whole game is so also the map kind of seemed a bit small but you know what looks can be quite deceiving so yeah there will be um, a lot of these caterpillars uh, in this whole area so but they are you know super slow so they're not a big threat actually to you Oh, I forgot, I have a charge people. Yeah, we also have these bugs here to deal with, but uh, here's the thing. For now, I actually do not um, advise you to go into this room, because as you can see, whenever you destroy these enemies, this pillar appears here, and uh, as far as I know, you cannot actually do anything with it. At least for now. There is a missile tank there, but... Uh, We'll be returning uh, to this place later. Here's the thing why I do not advise you to go here, because uh, getting out of this place is kinda a bit hard. You need to jump over this pillar, but it's kinda a bit tedious to do, as you can see. And uh, yeah, if you touch it, uh, you take a lot of damage. Ouch. Yeah. So, uh, just avoid that room, at least for now. Okay, charge beam, ready, set, go! Here we go. Yeah, this game uh, has definitely uh, more impact on you, actually, um, on your very first playthrough, simply because, uh, as you can see, this Metroid game is much more um, story-based Metroid game. It's not your usual Metroid. That's why it's uh, known more as, uh, actually, plot -troid. Um So, yeah... In later playthroughs, um, it won't have so much impact on you anymore, unfortunately. So... But you know, I still appreciate this game for what it is. It's still an awesome game. It's just that, you know, it's not your usual kind of Metroid game. So... By the way, speaking about our charge beam, uh, because, um, well, it's not too much of a spoiler, but... Uh, you see how previously we got uh, missiles, right? Which were our pretty much go-to weapon to deal with enemies. Which were much more powerful, actually, than uh, our regular beam. But now that we got charge beam, now actually charge beam is uh, much more powerful than missiles. So, uh, yeah, it's not too much of a spoiler, but uh, later on in the game we'll get uh, more beam upgrades. And also more missile upgrades. So here's how it works in this game. At least that's how I remember it. I may be wrong, once again, on this one, but uh, I think that's how it worked. Uh, whenever you obtain either a missile upgrade or a beam upgrade, that particular upgrade is now your pretty much go-to weapon that you should use. So previously we got missiles, we were relying more on missiles to deal with enemies. Now we got... Uh, charge beam, so now we'll be relying uh, more on our charge uh, beam attacks. So, so yeah. Cool! So here's our security room. <laughs> okay, that was uh, pretty quick. Nice suit. I like that. But yeah, you step on this panel and uh, that's how you unlock uh, level 1 doors, which are um, these uh, blue hatches that you actually see on the map. And as you can see, yeah, blue lock here is uh, open on this map screen as well. So, so now we can open these uh, blue doors, not only in this sector too, 
but uh, it's applied to actually all sectors. So, so yeah. Here's the thing about the plot in this game. I like the plot, don't get me wrong, but um, what I do not like about it is how it is explained. Ouch. Wow, you're, you, you are kind of just blending in in that grass there. But yeah, I don't like uh, too much how it is explained, because uh, you see, uh, for the most part, uh, how the plot is explained in this game is just by uh, computer conversations, and that's it. There are not too much cutscenes in this game. So yeah, I wish the plot was explained uh, in some uh, different ways. Then maybe, you know, this whole plot aspect of this game uh, would not bother me too much. So, let's check out this blue door first here. Something maybe interesting? Well, we have these uh, slime hedgehog hybrids or whatever the hell these things are. But uh, they are kind of super easy to deal with. So, I think there was something in this room. Maybe I cannot get it now. So. But um, yeah, I'll uh, remember this room for later. I'm pretty sure I could get something here, but uh, maybe not now. Let's try our missiles. Yeah, some of the trickiest blocks to uncover are actually the missile blocks. Simply because um, you never try to use your missiles on them. On the blocks. Usually what you're doing, you are trying to shoot, right? But missiles, you are kind of saving, right? So yeah, you're just saving them for um, for um, enemies. So okay, let's see. Let's go here to the left. See more of these caterpillars. Yeah, there's uh, one ongoing problem in pretty much each and every Metroid game, and you know what it is? Uh, well, it's actually the enemies. Most of the enemies in uh, Metroid games, they are kind of like these small little critters, you know, which are, in most cases, much more smaller than Samus. I wish there were more enemies which were actually bigger than Samus, <laughs> because uh, I'm not feeling uh, too threatened by these small little fries, you know. So. So speaking about our uh, walking saxophone guy, so here's what will happen. Uh, our saxophone dude, from now on, will appear in uh, certain rooms in this game. And uh, whenever you see it, although computer tells you to escape from it, my advice would be to actually avoid it at all costs. In most of these cases, your best course of action is actually not to engage it, but uh, to hide from it. Simply because uh, if you engage it, you'll, you'll just die. Like, seriously. Okay, bomb data downloaded. Morph into a ball and press B. So here we get our bombs, which you can view on your um, status screen here as well. So, bombs will be uh, kind of your... Uh, main tool to uncover secrets. You can deal damage to uh, enemies uh, with your bombs as well, but uh, you know that damage is pretty small. And as you can see, bombs, they do not explode right away. So yeah, they're not too reliable when it comes to dealing damage to enemies. So, there's an interesting thing about bombs that um, they uncover all... Oh! What the hell was that? Well, that was actually our uh, walking saxophone. Only in this case, uh, we did not see it. However, though, if you notice now, something changed. So basically, environment changed. This way is, for example, blocked off, so yeah. 
Yeah, in this case, we did not see uh, our uh, saxophone dude, but uh, it was here. So, so sometimes, yeah, these kind of events will happen. So, but yeah, speaking about bombs, uh, it is our main tool now to uncover secrets, simply because um, it works um, to uncover all different blocks that you can actually break in this game. Normally, you know, uh, we have bomb blocks in this game that you can uh, destroy. They have kind of like this uh, small little uh, um, circle in them. But your bombs can uncover other blocks that you can interact with in some way or another. So yeah, bombs uh, are a very handy tool to uncover secrets. By the way, uh, if you are, um, for example, hopping from Zero mission straight to this game like I did, right? Um, you're probably wondering, uh, can you bomb jump with your bombs? Well, the highest that you can go is just something like this. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. You know why? Simply because um, bombs, as you can see, they explode very, very slowly. So yeah, if you're thinking about uh, infinite bomb jumping, a trick that you could do in uh, Metroid Zero Mission, uh, forget about that uh, here, unfortunately. But uh, embrace the truth, okay? So yeah. Okay, let's see. I think I could break the floor here with my bombs now. Or something. Maybe I'm thinking about something else. Yeah, I probably am uh, thinking about something else. Phew, okay. To the left or to the right? To the left or to the right? To the left or to the right? Uh, let's go to the right. Oh, save room. So yeah, you can use this if you want. But I won't be needing it. Whoa! Spinning charged demo attack. <laughs> oh, okay, you are too sturdy for that. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, this whole uh, part of uh, this game, this whole sector, is uh, very mazy. So expect me to be uh, lost a bit here. It's not that even that it's too mazy, it's just that, you know, there are many of these uh, really weird-looking places where I think that I can kind of bomb them. Oh! Like, for example, this one, you see? <laughs> so, yeah, expect me to kind of stay here for a while to explore here a bit. I think here will be something interesting, yeah, if you bomb that particular block. If you are bad at wall jumping, for example, you can use this pillar here randomly appears from the ground to reach uh, this secret here. So... Ooh, I see something yummy! Up above. Enemy! Please, get out of the way. So I think there will be actually one more of these pillars here. Let's see... No? Hmm. I think there was, actually. So yeah, bombs... In cases where you are getting lost, for example, and if you don't know what to do, bombs will be your answer in um, many cases, actually. So don't forget that you have them, like seriously, because they are a really handy tool to have. So. Let's see. Oh. Oh, okay, that, that, that was a mistake. Let's use our charge beam on these dudes. So let's see, maybe something breakable? I know that the this block is breakable, but maybe something else? They're just searching for, for some... for some... Uh, breakable blocks here. Or some suspicious looking blocks. Okay, let me wait for this guy to move out of the way. 
and charge B. So speaking about Metroid games in general, uh, there is actually Metroid Prime 4 in the works, but here's the thing about uh, that game. I'm a bit worried about it, you know why? Simply because it has been in the uh, development for quite a while now, so I'm wondering, you know. I just wish it did not enter development hell or something, that would be like super sucky. So. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I thought uh, I'll break the block there and then I'll just fall down. But okay. Something maybe up here? No. Okay. And charge people. Okay. Let's go to the left now. Oh, thanks, game, for reminding me once again that I'm on a VSL uh, research station. Thank you for that. Thank you for breaking my immersion. Yeah, if it's not already obvious, then uh, this is a tropical sector. So we have kind of like a tropical theme going on here. So... I don't think it's related on any kind of planet that appeared in uh, Metroid uh, games. Just related to tropics, you know. Just related to the environment itself. So. I like the sound that the charge beam makes. Ouch. Yeah, these dudes, uh, they kind of shoot uh, spikes at you. So watch out. It's a good idea to deal with them when you uh, use your charge beam and then curl into your ball. Because uh, what will happen is that you'll destroy the enemy and the spike that flies out of the enemy uh, won't be able to damage you. Because you'll be, you'll be a ball, you know, you, you'll be uh, smaller. So, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Oh! Uh, okay. This caterpillar dude is uh, a bit different from the others. Also, I'm almost dead here. So this guy is uh, quite interesting from other caterpillar dudes, simply because, uh, yeah, whenever you uh, deal enough damage to him, he kind of becomes much more uh, faster. So watch out for these blue dudes. Here's the thing about this place, we'll be revisiting this place a bit later, and uh, some things will change as well. So this place, yeah, it's a bit mazy, it constantly changes, you know, like for example, in that case when uh, SIX appeared in that room, some things changed, you know, and stuff like that. So these are the things that will be happening in the sector. So you see this block, this is actually the uh, bomb block. So you never see this block with that small little dot in the middle, it means that you can use your bombs. Uh, to dispose of these blocks. So, Okay, let's see. Yeah, as you can see, you thought that this map is small? Well... Think again. So, yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah, this, this part. <laughs> uh, this is probably uh, one of the first uh, points where many players are actually stuck in this game. But first, you know what we'll do? We'll destroy these uh, jumping bloodworms, or what the hell are these things? I don't know. So here's the thing, game throws kind of like bullshit move at you here, because you cannot go here to the left, you cannot go out of this place, even with your wall jump, you cannot. You just cannot reach that place, you cannot reach that ledge. And you cannot do the same thing actually here. <laughs> uh, and you might think, what do you need to do here? Well, uh, considering we got bombs, let's just bomb everything. Yeah, sometimes uh, you will need to do that to uh, uncover some things in this game. Like, for example, here, a hidden pillar, which just randomly is here. Like, there, there's not even a, a queue 
that there is a pillar here, you know, it, it, it's just here and you just need to magically figure out that you need to bomb this place. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's that's a pretty sucky move in my opinion, because th there is, like, seriously, no, no cue whatsoever on what you need to do there. So, yeah, sometimes uh, these uh, bullshit moves will happen in this game. So, so in case, you know, uh, something like that happens where you, like, for real, have no idea where to go anymore, just use your bombs, like, seriously. Just, just don't forget that you have them. Okay, let's see. You see, like, for example, this block here to the left, it kind of seems that it can be breakable, right? But no, it, 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 it is not. So there are many cases in this sector like that. Even after playing uh, this game, like, many times, uh, I still am kind of lost sometimes in this sector. I don't think I can actually reach that platform then with my uh, wall jump. Yeah, I think I can't. Okay. We're ready. Let's check uh, this door first here. Oh. Oh, I remember this room. Uh, can't reach these monkey bars at the top here. So here's the thing, there'll be these uh, fish enemies. Here's one interesting thing about them. When you curl into your more ball, they cannot uh, damage you, like, at all. I don't know why, but they just cannot. <laughs> There's one more interesting thing about them. Let's see if I can demonstrate that to you. Yeah, you see, whenever you destroy one small fish, uh, that Exparasite flows into uh, the other small fish. And then they form together this uh, big fish. And by the way, yeah. If you curl into your more ball, this big fish cannot damage you. So, so that's quite uh, interesting. Um, can I do something here? I forgot. Oh, one more. Dong pillar. Okay. I completely forgot. Can I actually do here something in this room to the left? But we'll see. Because, uh, we have, like, water here, so everything is, like, super slow. Yeah, e even my wall jump is, like, ugh, super slow. <laughs> uh, this block was breakable here at the top, I think. Let's see... Oh, I think there was, uh, one more of this... ...hidden pillar here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. And this block would be breakable, I remember. Maybe with bombs, but, uh... Hmm. Yeah, I think for now I cannot do anything here, actually. But uh, let's remember this place for later here. Oh, oh, also to get out of this place, bomb this uh, block here to reveal one more hidden pillar. Yeah. This sector loves these pillars, uh, for whatever reason. So. And also, there is one uh, missile tank here in this room. Um, if you grab these uh, monkey bars, you can reach it, but for now, I cannot actually uh, do that. So, yeah. Okay. I'm looking for a safe point because I actually want to end this episode. <laughs> something here? Hmm. Nope. And w w once again, game, thank you for reminding me that I'm in a lab. Absolutely. Well, there is something there, but I cannot reach that place, like, at all. And also there, as well. Okay. Yeah, you know, if you uh, take this place one step at a time, if you take it uh, methodically, then it's not actually so bad. For the reason I was like super stressed uh, previously in the previous episode that I'll be kind of uh, having a lot of trouble here, but, but no, it's oh, 
But no, it's actually, uh... It's, it, it's okay. It's not that bad. For me, this floor is super suspicious. So let's see. Maybe it's just me. Maybe there's actually nothing there. And also about bombs, you can only place, I think, four bombs at a time. Let's see. Yeah, only four bombs at a time. It's not a big deal, but still. Okay, you know, uh... No. Let me spare this poor little caterpillar guy here. Oh god. Yeah, this uh, whole uh, sector kind of feels a bit overwhelming at times, so... So, yeah. Okay, so these blocks we cannot break. However, as you can see, with bombs you can reveal, actually, uh, them. So this is a power bomb uh, block. So, yeah, remember uh, these blocks, remember that particular icon, so... But for now, you know, we do not have, uh, actually, uh, power bombs, so we cannot do anything there. So, but okay, guys, uh, I think uh, this will be it for today. Uh, yeah, this uh, sector uh, is a bit long, but uh, hopefully you uh, still enjoyed this episode, so let's save our game data here. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, be meeting you all in the next episode where we'll uh, maybe finish this whole sector. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and uh, yeah, see you all next time. Cheers.